Hello everyone, my name is Mecca and I'm joined here by two guests as I'm going to showcase the new Project Exile patch for Final Fantasy 776. With me are two people very, very involved in the process of making this. One of them is Sarazen. Say hello. 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 And I've also got with me the late playtester of the project, Crash Boombang. Hey, I'm the barter guy. <laughs> and <laughs> together we're going to show off two chapters today. We're going to show off chapter 4 as well as chapter 11, because those have some interesting dialogue worth showing off. And as I play through, they'll be talking about the process, what went into it, um, anything they feel like mentioning, anything they feel like you should know about their new patch. So I'll just hop right into it. And um, is there anything you guys want to mention straight off the bat? Uh, straight off the bat, I'd just like to uh, thank you for having us, and I'd like to thank Crash for coming along and for being such a diligent playtester. Crash the playtesting machine. How many times have you played through the whole thing, Crash? Oh, I don't play through the whole game. I just do it a chapter at a time. Ah, true, true, but, true, true. Like, casually After text insertion for one is done, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, casually I've done the game, like, four or five times. Okay, but have you, like, played the same chapter many, many times? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll say many, many times then. Okay, so I'll just start chapter four. Uh, if there is a, a place where you want me to pause, because there's something interesting to mention about it, just say so, just say pause, and I'll stop pressing A as soon as I can, as soon as I hear it. Uh, if not, I'll just cruise on and show off the amazing translation work that you've both contributed to. All right, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to chime in. Ah, sure, I will. So I guess I'll read out the narration at least, because I don't know, I find voice acting a little bit cringy always, but sometimes I do it because, you know, I get possessed or something, so I guess I'll just read it out. Now in Redrick, Redrick's clutches, Leaf was detained and taken to Manstar by Imperial soldiers. His imprisonment bore a certain irony. Manstar was once the sovereign land of House Leonster. Do you say Leonster? Did I say I it? say Leonster. Leonster. Hmm? Okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm so used to saying Leinster, which is the case for almost every name, but I will try to get used to Leonster. It sounds like Lion, like, you know, like, I don't know, I'm reminded of like Lionheart and that kind of stuff. It was now governed by House Frege, who had personally been installed as rulers by the Emperor of Granville after his conquest of North Thracia. Radric himself had once been a general of the Kingdom of Connaught. Is that how you say it? Connaught? Connaught? Cannot. Cannot. I say cannot, personally, yeah. I think that's also how the old patch kind of spelled it. Um, but colluded with the Empire during the war. For that service, he was made Duke of Manster. While still subordinate to Lord Bloom, head of House Frege, Radric was entrusted with the day-to-day -day management of Manster. Leif would now see firsthand what life was like in his family's former home. Dun 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 dun. Imprisoned. This Sorry, this chapter's title is kind of funny. Yeah. Depending on how you read it, it can mean either underground prison or dungeon prison. Hmm. So but... I just decided to go with imprisoned. Yeah, because I think I think the old title was the prison or something. Uh, the... the dungeon, I think. Yeah. Ha 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 ha! Without a doubt, this feat will secure my position in Manster and beyond. Dashin. See that the brat doesn't do as much as blink before the Knights of Connaught come to claim him. Of course, sire. It's high time to celebrate with a visit to the arena. You, woman, you'll be accompanying me. Why me? I assumed you would want to see the other girls, but if you wish to spit on my generosity... I don't think that's what he says in the old time, but I, I actually really like... Um, I've, I've read most of Radrick's dialogue so far. I actually really like the, what's been done to him. You can like... From what I can feel, I can tell that he's a noble, but he's also an asshole. So, like, he talks like a noble asshole. That's what it feels like to me. Is that Was that the intention? Raedric is very fun. Um, my intent with him is to make him the villain that you love to hate. Kind of the, the smug, uh, I have the upper hand and I know it kind of villain. And... That's built up throughout his appearances. He shows up in chapter one, uh, three, here again in four, and he's going to show up again in five. Um, and that's to make it all the sweeter when the facade totally collapses in five. Because Veld shows up, shuts him down immediately, you know, is 
not at all swayed by his false bravado, and then he just out outright panics when Ivel starts doing really well in the arena. So it's it if he starts acting like a coked up lunatic from the start, it's less satisfying when he finally breaks down in the later chapters. So it's build him up, make him smug, make him composed. He's witty. And then, oh dear, everything's gone to hell and I'm panicking. That makes it all the more satisfying. Very much agreed. Other girls, okay. I mean, Rita and Nana, was there something you wanted to say? Yeah, I was going to say, for me, Ray Drake, it's like if they took Narshin and made him the main villain. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I think he's a bit of a Saturday morning cartoon villain, kind of. I don't actually think he's yeah. one of the better Fire Emblem villains, but he does work with NFE5. Yeah. He's a Saturday morning yeah. cartoon villain, but in a good way. Yeah. He's a very simple man. He doesn't need to be a complex villain. He just wants power and property. And he doesn't even know what he'll do with it. He reminds me of that line from the Joker. You know, I, I don't even know what I'd do with the car if I actually caught it. He doesn't even have an end game for getting all this power and property. He just wants it. He's almost like a child, like a Saturday morning cartoon villain. Mm -hmm. So have some fun with him. Make him smug. I guess smug is a great word uh, to sum up. I'll move on from here. Or we'll, we'll be here forever. But that was a good uh, explanation of Frederick. Uh, I believe those are their names. Yes. Never fear. I haven't laid a finger on them. I've been keeping them quite comfortable. Are you really gonna let me see him? You have my word. Fine, lead the way. Ah, oh, old fashioned leading the way for such a fine lady. <laughs> da, 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 da. This is it. Asphalt and I will locate the children, but I want the rest of you to go down to the prison and free everyone locked up there. Brighton, you're in charge. Yes, sir. Once we've released those poor souls, we'll rendezvous with you. God's willing, we'll all meet again. Fortune be with you. We're counting on you, Laura. Think you can handle this? Uh-huh. No luck is gonna stand in my way. Just watch my back, okay? Even if someone were to get past us, you could grab their weapons, no problem. <laughs> Not if they're too heavy, I can't. Then be glad me and Brighton are here, eh? Come on, let's go. Yeah, I think one of the reasons we agreed on chapter 4 is that there are so many different people talking uh, within this chapter. I think just so far alone, we've had like 5 or 6 people. And we've got like Fergus, Karen, Leaf, Lifus, uh, some more Dashin. I think even Ishtar and Manfroy show up at the end, as well as Julius. So that makes it very oh, good. Yeah for, um, you know, talking about the different voices of the characters, because, you know, we, you talked about Raedric's smug voice so far. Uh, of course, there's a lot to do with Raedric in this chapter and in the chapters before that, because he has a lot of lines. These chap these characters have a lot less lines, but I noticed one of the things you've done with them sometimes is you give them a little bit of an accent, you know, kind of, you know, leaving off certain things, replace them with a bit of an apostrophe, I think it's called, to give them, like, a bit of a way of talking. Is that something you've been, through, been doing consciously for these characters? Yes, and we're going to see a lot of that with Fergus. I had uh, quite a bit of fun with Fergus's voice. Um, the apostrophe denotes like a, an omitted uh, syllable, basically. Okay. Uh, so a lot of characters speak more um, informally. They don't talk too stiffly. Uh, here's, here's a big word for you. Uh, they speak verisimilitudinously, which ah. is to say they speak in an acceptable simulation of reality. Dude, I'm literally bartered. Big words hurt my head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, something else I've noticed when I've played this, it feels like the units move more slowly, but maybe that's just me, but I, I put it on fast, but I still feel like they move more slowly. Is that just me? Uh, I... All I've done is text insertion okay. and like menu alteration, so I don't. It's possible that maybe something along the way went wrong, but I haven't done anything intentionally okay. to do that. It, no. it might just be my uh, my imagination then. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll from here. I'll just do the good old um, thing with uh, no, not Laura. I'll just do my usual chapter four strat. And in the meantime, uh, while there's no dialogue, feel free to talk about anything you that comes to mind. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'm, I'm gonna kite around the uh, enemies and do the whole wait 60 turns for the reinforcements to be over thing. So you've got plenty of time to talk about whatever you want. 60 turns? Jeez. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, to kind of pick up what I was saying um, earlier, uh, 
Hold on, dialogue. Oh no, we have some dialogue. <laughs> I, I, I'm actually getting pretty sore throat from voice acting, so I will just show this on the screen, and all the people will sometimes watch me because I don't voice act, so I'm gonna please both sides a little bit. <laughs> this is uh, definitely some further miss to the talking. <laughs> no, not Gomez. <laughs> oh, I love how he says it while the guy is still stare standing there. Man, you probably had a lot of fun with Lifus. Uh, bandit dialogue in general is pretty fun because you can you have a lot of liberties to give them some neat accents and some neat turns of phrases. I think the most fun I had was with Fox in Chapter Two. Gonna have to hold that thought. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's go. a lot Here's of apostrophes, yeah. <laughs> Should I try to voice act Fergus? If you want to, you're probably better at it than I am. Yeah, I'll okay, do let's, let's okay, sure. We're, we're, we'll tag team this sure. cameo. Fergus the Cell Sword, at your service. And I'm this close to being done with Yugdral, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> Saw a bunch of soldiers making trouble for a young lass, so I stepped in, got arrested for the effort. Terrible story, really. Oh yeah, Mecca, yeah, I guess you're left for Karen. Oh shit. Oh please, you didn't just try to <laughs> stop him. You beat him out you beat one of them half to death. That's a terrible story here. I can't do girl voices. <laughs> Wait just a darn minute, you were the one who started it! Yeah, and they arrested me because they thought I helped, <laughs> I helped you nearly kill the guy. This is on you, not me. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to take a nap, that's what. Hey, you got to learn to take the good with the bad, you know? Just wake me when it's meal time. Ugh, I don't even care anymore. Ugh, I'm sorry. I'm Karen, by the way. Karen? That's an unusual name for a Thracian. That's because I'm not a Thracian. I'm from Celeste. I just gotten into town when I got in trouble thanks to this dimwit. Celeste? That's far north of here from the reserves. Why come all the way here from Celeste? Yeah, can you turn up your mic in some way? Because you sound a bit low uh, right now. Oh, uh. I. Oh, it's a headset. I have no idea how to turn this off. <laughs> okay, just try to speak I'll loudly speak then. <laughs> yeah. Our prince up and left the country, that's why. Queen passed away, and the princess is too young. Uh, the princess is too young to take the throne, so people don't know who to turn to. I came here to look for a little runaway prince. I'd heard that the kingdom of Celeste had been overthrown by the Empire. How is it the royal family is still alive? The rebels have been keeping them safe. Everyone is still waiting. Everyone's still wait <laughs> Everyone's still willing to fight, as gathered in the city of Thove, where they have rallied around the royal family. Me? I'm gonna become a Pegasus Knight and land on my lance. Impressive. If you become a Pegasus Knight, you'll be able to dance through the skies. Very on the nose there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can fly already, but I won't be doing aerial acrobatics like a knight anytime soon. Still, my Pegasus and me can already understand each other pretty well. His name is Hermes, and he's just the cutest thing you ever saw, with a brain to match. He's probably the one dancing through the skies right now, looking for me, that is. So why did the prince leave Celeste in the first place? It's a long story. The prince wanted to look for the king, but the, <laughs> the king's something of a flake himself. He also left Celeste years ago, abandoning his kingdom and family both. Everybody feels betrayed, and nobody expects the king to come back anymore. So we want Prince Zed to come back instead and take the throne. I was sent here to meet with him, but ended up jailed because of this mutton head. <laughs> Who is this, Marcia? <laughs> 
<laughs> what about man? Is it meal time already? Oh god, not once. <laughs> oh, I guess not. But can't you keep it down until then, at least? This is a prison for crying out loud. It's not like anyone can escape all your yammering. And it's not like anyone can escape your loud snoring either. Honestly, how can you sleep at a time like this? You are the most boorish, insensitive... Hey, keep it down, hey, you twits. Down, you twits. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Two souls. See? Even the Empire agrees with me. <laughs> huh. Ellipses. Da -da -da. <laughs> What's eating you, lad? You look awful upset. Might as well speak your mind, huh? Not like it could do any harm now. You're right. In fact, maybe you two can even help me. Oh, never heard I that track going for so long. <laughs> yeah, this, this was a this was a good pick oh, for a chat. Nope. 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 Oh, nope. Oh, okay, we got more. <laughs> it's okay. It's over soon. Boss, boss, yeah. the door is open. It happened just like you said it would. Ellipses. What's the matter? Your crew came for you. Don't you, don't that perk, perk you up? <laughs> Lady Luck really is fickle. Somebody actually did come. Well, let it never be said that lying through your teeth doesn't work. Alright. Uh, I think this is it until this door is unlocked. Yeah. Um... Alright, we have 45 seconds to talk. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, Lithis and Fergus especially were fun in this chapter. The the uh, the banter he has with Karen was very interesting. Why is that? Anyway, I mentioned... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Why is that so interesting? Uh, because you get a lot of characters that have prior relationships in the game, like, say, uh, Olwen and Alfred. It used to be Freddy's Alfred now send your complaints to the Discord channel. Um, but they don't have banter per se. We've got more... No. Uh, here we just kind of have these two people. They don't really know each other. They're kind of arguing. But they're also kind of becoming friends at the same time. There's this weird push and pull going on. And there's also a lot of exposition going Hold on. So you want to try to make <laughs> okay. it entertaining. Who wants to take it? <laughs> uh, I'll take the guy. Hey, you all right over there, old lady? Uh, I'll take the old lady. Oh, well, don't you fret about me. I don't have much time left on this earth anyhow. It's me grandchildren I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, don't overdo it, lady. Look, just uh, lie down, all right? Sheesh, the Empire even locks up sick old grandmas now? Looks like it. How long are they going to get to throw their weight around, doing whatever they please? You reckon the magic folk have a chance of taking the Empire down? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, they've got to have a chance, right? And if they've got a chance, we've got to believe in them. Their leader sure said they call him the Hero of the Winds. Yeah, and he's earned that name. Before he showed up, the Magi had been all but wiped out by the Empire. Then he showed up, and just look at how the Magi are doing now. The Empire keeps trying to grab hold of them, but they just keep looking out. More than luck, maybe. That's why Sir said's a man worth believing in. Can't go wrong with a fellow like that. Alright, you were saying, Zero? <laughs> <laughs> just a note there, it's one of those things you never think about until you're doing a patch, but you, I actually had to go in and make sure... Uh, all the villagers had the right portraits that you had if you opened the status screen on them oh, in this yeah, chapter. I had, to, I had to go look at the Japanese playthrough to make sure all the portraits were right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so... Um, naturalistic dialogue is a big goal of mine. It's the, what I use the big vocab word for. Uh, and it's an acceptable simulation of reality to kind of steal the explanation from Dan Olson. And that is, you know that the characters aren't speaking strictly like how they would in real life. In real life, people stutter all the time. They stop and rephrase what they were trying to say. They sometimes make points that don't go anywhere. They stumble over their words, blah, 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 blah. People don't speak perfectly. But in fiction, that's really cumbersome to read. So people speak purposefully, and you don't want to waste the reader's time, unless it's part of their characterization to be really inarticulate. So, 
everybody here, they speak to the point. They don't waste time. They don't stumble over their words too much. They have an accent, but they don't, like, keep stuttering and stumbling. And that's why I say it's an acceptable simulation of reality. It's not perfectly how people talk, Hold that but again. it's close enough. Hey, you're fucking Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well! Hey, Prince Leaf! Somebody's come to rescue us! Come on, let's make a break for it! Who in the world are they? Does it matter? Save those questions for when we're far, far away from here. Look, there's a stairway to the north that leads out of here. You go ahead. I'll give them soldiers what bore if they try to follow. Well, what happens to you if I escape first? <laughs> Hey, this is not the, the text I read. <laughs> mm, I expect I'll get caught and thrown in here again. Or worse. Don't matter to me none if I can do some good before I get grabbed. I won't accept that. I'll only escape after everyone else has. <laughs> Did you get that, player? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry, Junior. Uh, suppose I can keep you company for a time, if you need someone to hold your hand that bad. Oh, who am I kidding? After hearing your story, I'm invested! So is every other player. Hmm, <laughs> you're a more decent sort than you look, Fergus. Falling for me already, huh? Hey, 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 oh please, That's if you right. think... <laughs> if you think that, you must be still be half asleep. Haven't had your morning coffee yet, Grandma? <laughs> or Grandpa, whatever. All right, all right, lay off. But have you made up your own mind about escaping? The mad guy's head honcho is a fella by the name of Sed. Same name as the prince you're after, right? It's probably him, yeah. But right now, Prince Leaf is the one we need to worry about. And besides, that coward Radrick is using women as, women as hostages. That's unforgivable. Any plan that gives me a chance to smash his face in is fine by me. You got the skill with a blade to back them words up, lass? I won't pretend I'm the best, but I'll give it my all. I mean, it's higher than your lance rank. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Oh, jeez. That's two kids I gotta look out for now. Uh, quite the saber vibe from him. I know, right? Oh, cool. Yeah, kinda. Uh, let's see. Um, I, I think now we're sort of done until the civilians are yeah. getting out, so... All right, now we got extended period of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Could have timed it all better. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was just about at the end of my point, which is that um, the, the characters don't speak exactly like realistically. If you do that, it would be so tiresome to read. But they speak close to it, and you can get close to it by giving them different accents, having them use colloquialisms, having them be witty, so on and so forth. It's close enough to reality that your brain is able to suspend disbelief all the more easily. There are similitudinously, right? And it's that kind of naturalistic dialogue that you want to try and capture in a good localization. It's close enough to reality that people are able to read it and forget that they're uh, reading fictional dialogue. Well said. Yeah. Maybe we can Except talk... for when you need to tell them about game mechanics. Yeah, I was about to say, I think the old patch is like a, a mistake that makes it look different than it really is. When uh, I escape, everyone else does too. Yeah. Which, yep. I mean, I get what it means, but only because I know, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Only yeah, reset once. It, it's right up there with the the infamous Final Fantasy VII first boss attack while its tails up. <laughs> if I, you know what that what that refers to. I don't. To. I don't. I think I've heard of it once, but never uh, never Final tell Fantasy me about VII. any franchise that isn't fire more Pokemon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind then. I mean, you can you can talk about it if you want. I just won't know what, <laughs> okay. what you're on about. Uh, it is. Really not that complicated. Basically, they're trying to teach you about the active time battle system with the first battle, but the localization was so shoddy uh, that Barrett is supposed to tell Cloud, and by extension the player, if you attack while it's tails up, it'll counterattack. So you're supposed to, you know, just like sit there, wait it out, wait for this tail to lower, and then go in. But the localization was so bad, you know, this guy, our sick bad, that he said, attack while it's tails up! And there are many a story on Game FAQs of children who 
dutifully followed those instructions and kept getting game overs. No. Unfortunate. But it was only the first boss of the game, so hardly anybody saw it. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, thankfully this translation is a lot better in that regard. Now we actually know that, you know, Leaf has to escape last and he really wants to. So that no one else tries to, like, let Leaf escape first <laughs> or something. Yeah, and they even, like, those brackets weren't me thinking that you're stupid. It's, they they even put it in quotes in the Japanese oh, text, Oh, wow, really, too. yeah. I heard that it's quotes a, can do a lot of different things in Japanese, though. I think yeah, they're... well, they're not quotation marks as we know them. They're kind of like box corners. They're like opposite box corners on a diagonal. But but it's uh, the word escape is like in those in both of his lines. So they're like telegraphing here's what you do, player. You got it? <laughs> yeah, it's like there's like s sort of speaking out of universe inside game language, I guess is what I would... Like that's how I interpret it when I saw it anyway. It's like, okay, the game is actually telling me about the game now, not about the story. Anyway, I think I'll let the civilians out next turn. Stupid vulnerary. Uh, I think I'll get get this guy's vulnerary before he starts being annoying. Yeah, <laughs> I think one of the brigands has like seven move, so he's like got way ahead. And then the other one of the other brigands has now nice. nice. no, it's nice. like three. <laughs> so nice game balance, Kaga. Well played. I don't think I can reach him now because everyone is in the way. Oh, well, whatever. You guys are gonna have to deal with it. Uh, civilians, let's go. The heroes of the North have come for us. We've got ourselves a real chance now. If I remember right, there's a passage to the surface just west of here. I remember. I remember. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven. Yeah, you got some South Park watchers here. Um... Oh, I stopped. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, it turns out having an entire season-long plot arc about internet trolls in 2017 wasn't exactly the most topical or compelling subject matter. <laughs> I love the number berries to speak for yeah. yourselves. Oh. Turns out turning Th like, those were fun. Yeah, turns out turning an episodic gag-based show into a season-long plot-based show was not a good idea. <laughs> I mean, they, they probably weren't counting on Trump winning, to be fair. Oh, they weren't. <laughs> they, they had to rewrite the episode last minute. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Rip Garrison, <laughs> you're you're now no longer a recurring character, or you're recurring, but you're no longer supporting cast, I guess. I remember. So Fire Emblem's a thing. Yeah, that. Oh yeah, that is a, <laughs> that is a game. You're right. I mean, what so else? Let's see here. We we've talked about um, Fergus, and I guess I guess Fergus bantering with Leaf and Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about Lithus and the way he speaks to his people. Is there anything distinctive about, like, for example, Machua or Brighton or uh, Lara even? They don't have many lines, but I'm sure you still have to they, put some thought into them. Yeah, they don't have too many lines, so th I have them speak uh, similarly to Ival, which is they speak mostly correctly, their grammar is mostly intact, they just sometimes use uh, informal contractions and drop the D on AND or drop their G's when they're using verbs that end in ING, but otherwise speak correctly. Yeah, it feels like every character has a voice, but there's only so many different voices you can do. So at some point, you're probably going to end up with like uh, one voice for the brigands, roughly like the really rough people like Dagdar and um, Marty, I guess. And then like people who are nobles, people who are knights, and then like the rest, I guess, is what I would call it. No, Marty yeah. has a very unique voice. Oh, does he? Oh, Marty's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just skip this guy, it's fine. Yeah. A thousand thanks upon you, Magi! Everybody, make a break for the staircase east of here! Okay, good. Thank God you remember He was an that. old prospector. I didn't know that until I voiced him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mar yeah. Marty specifically sounds like Patrick Star. <laughs> yeah, like, I made a note that I I needed him to talk to himself to <laughs> to approximate, approximate an automatopoeia that couldn't be translated, and I said that, he, you know, it was Patrick Star style, and then Crash just started posting a bunch of videos of, of Patrick Star, and it's impossible for me to do Marty's dialogue and not hear him as Patrick Star now. <laughs> it's okay, Marty. He looked, I mean, he kind of looks like him. I can't don't see it now. Run for the hills! <laughs> That's a pretty good Patrick Star. Thank you. Doesn't he always say, uh, or the, Marty at the, at the old patch, he says something like, um, here we go again, but I think at this time it was much different. 
Yeah, he says, um, uh, oh, for crying out loud. Yeah. Ugh, I'm beat. Yeah. Uh, and the sentiment is the same. It's just like, ugh, this again. Makes sense, I guess. I mean, like I said, you can do it literally, or you can just try to convey the meaning and the voice, and maybe change a few words a little bit, just because it works better. Yeah. As yeah, long as it really works good, out. Yeah. Really yeah. good example of that for, that I've found when testing was Callion, or Carrion, who is now Callion, because we don't want to name him after dead carcasses. <laughs> sure enough. I mean, it's a little on the nose. I mean, it's representative of his performance as a unit, but <laughs> we don't want to go with it. I didn't want to be the one to say it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have a strong contingent of Callion fans in this stream. They're, they're not here for Leaf or Forgus or Asvol. They're here for Callion. That man's a star. I mean, I think you trained him in the, in the safe I'm going to use for Chapter 11 for and some reason. And not Safi. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> These yeah. saves were mine. I got them from Xylon Phone. I'm passing the buck off to him with no shame. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, he freed the soldier. <laughs> it's easy enough to get Safi to warp just by spamming hammer. Yeah. And uh, shout out. Shoutouts to Valkama or Pala Emblem, because her tasks taught me how to rig. So I have been rigging staff misses and like crits <laughs> everywhere. I gotta test the release dialogue on every boss. And some of those suck a lot. True, true, like, true. I do not envy you that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think they, there's a boss or two that has like 20 builds that you can't even capture. <laughs> yeah, some of them they don't have release dialogue, so that's fine. Oh, okay. I actually tested on Galsis in chapter six. I got it to capture him. He doesn't even have release dialogue. Oh shit! <laughs> you wasted your life. I'm sorry. Yeah. Come to think of it, maybe this is a good time to talk about everyone who has helped you guys make this patch. Yeah. There's a lot of. Oh things. my goodness! Yes. Uh, uh, I, I know. I didn't say this beforehand, so I didn't have you prepare a list or anything. So if you forget anyone, we'll be forgiving you. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so many people to thank. Uh, first of all, thank you again for uh, having us on FEE3 and playing this for us. Uh, thanks to Crash for being the world's fastest playtester. I, I timed him when he was going through chapter 11, taking screenshots of every dialogue. It took him 49 minutes to clear chapter 11 and, and do everything. Yeah. And see, and like, and go back like okay what if i kill alfred this time what if i save alfred this time 49 minutes he's a machine Damn. the hedgehog he he made a deal with with some kind of he made some kind of faustian bargain i'm sure of it uh other people i have to thank uh my two dutiful editors uh Will Ewell, a.k.a. Shaleblade. He's been my good friend for many, many years, um, and he's one of the lead script editors. Looks over my work and tells me what works and what doesn't. Um, Jacob, a.k.a. Hero of Five Emblems, I think is his SF name, uh, who I collaborated with on the thing we put on the back burner for this uh, Fire Emblem 12 retranslation and is now working with me on this. Uh, other script editors, uh, Runic Sequence, Lopo, Whatevs, Seven. Um, oh, I know I'm forgetting somebody. I hope your name is going to come back to me. Please don't hate me. Uh, Xylon Phone for administrating the Discord. Um, uh, Sam, another good friend of mine, moral support. Um, Herb and Zane for being the geniuses to get most of the architecture of this up and running in the first place. Uh, really just a team effort all around, and I'm so, so grateful to be surrounded by people that are much smarter than me, who I've somehow tricked into helping me. <laughs> sure more will follow. I mean, I remember yeah, the Discord be. got, like, really busy after I made that video. Um, yeah, we got, like, video. 130 people now. Yeah. We had the ROM expansion problem solved within six hours of that video going up. Yeah. Okay, well, to be fair, though, I don't, I don't think, that, I think, I don't think yeah, that was my doing, though. Because it was a really simple problem to fix. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. And, and yeah. Crash got in contact with somebody from, from the romhacking.net Discord who was like, Oh, yeah, just do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And also... Uh, I think I should mention the other person that we just got on the, well, I guess, yeah, that we just got on the team for helping us with fonts. Ando, I think? Uh, no, we got someone, oh. just, 
the other day, actually. Oh, really? I got in contact with DDS, the guy who did the menu font for Project Naga. Oh, cool. I, I remember people mentioning him, and I think at one point you already had a line towards him or something, but he wasn't responding or something like it? Yeah, I, yeah, I actually just contacted him like over the weekend, and he came by the server, and he, he does have three other projects that he's also working on, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure his so, yeah, skills are in demand. It'll take a little while. Yeah. But it's no longer a question of who's going to do the fonts. It's just, okay, whenever we get around to it. Yeah. Which is a much better question to ask. <laughs> yes. And uh, I, I did stress to him that he should honor his other commitments first, of course, um, and that our translation and the patch was still in progress. So if it needed to be put on the back burner while he did other things that was fine and he very graciously agreed to take on a, a fourth project as well so we're very very happy to have him uh it's a tremendous honor to be working with the same person that contributed to project naga which i consider to be an industry quality localization and we're just so so lucky to have him and so so lucky to have everyone else really uh it it takes a village not well, not a village because those burn down easily. It takes a a a, a well-held fort to make a patch like this, and I'm very grateful to have everyone with me. I guess you could say it takes an army. <laughs> Build hey, an army. Trust everyone. <laughs> Trust everyone. Just not the mutton. Was there mutton in the original chat Japanese, by the way? Or is that like an inside joke? Oh, oh that, that was be. that was a pun that I made to transition because. Uh, Fergus really does just like say he's just gonna have a nap and then wakes up abruptly to be like what's that I need to give exposition now okay and it was a little abrupt so I wanted to make a better transition by having uh, making the mutton head pun like oh I got in trouble thanks to this mutton head what about mutton is it mealtime you know so instead of oh I'm awake now would you like to hear my backstory uh I love it when translators sneak in, sneak in think, think like this. I mean, the old one did like in America, which is just completely intrusive in a way, although I never noticed it when I first played it. That kind of transition I can definitely appreciate as something. Yeah. That's just yeah, creative something. liberties right there. Anyway, I waited yeah, for something. 65 turns while blocking reinforcements, so uh, there's no more soldiers coming in now, so I'm just going to do the kite around strategy now. If you're very confused watching this, maybe because you never played Thracia or for some other reason, uh, I have a video explaining this on my channel somewhere. Uh, it's basically a we have such things to show you. Yeah, foolproof way of beating chapter 4 without having to deal with that luck-based bullsh stuff room in the upper parts of the chapter. Let's see. Yeah, I just brute forced my way through this through that room when I had to test this. Oh it's yeah, I would too. This is not the yeah. fastest way probably, but it is um, probably the mo most RNG proof way. I think this leaf is pretty good though. Uh, it got like all the stat boosts, so I could still do that, but I'm just gonna do the kite around strategy just uh, to show off, I guess. Uh, I do want a sword on the Fergus, though. Um, I did something different with my swords this time, and I just can't keep track of what I did. Uh, but we'll just do this, I guess. Just give him a short sword. Alright, Karen goes here. Uh, oh. By the way, Siro, I think it's, it's a good opportunity to talk about just names, because I feel like that's a topic that a lot of people Oh, are yeah. Uh, yeah. I was thinking about yeah, that when got... you brought up Safi. Mm -hmm. Safe, yeah, safe. we got uh, Lithus, Meat Thief, instead of an F, it's T-H, and Mathura, instead of Makua. Makua, yeah. M person. All her random names. So there are many name changes in this patch. Um, I didn't do them arbitrarily or willy-nilly. I tried to change the names uh, either because they were um, ill-fitting and too commonplace for a fantasy setting, like Fred. Slight tweak to Alfred, and that sounds more plausible in a fantasy setting. Uh, or because they didn't look right to an anglophonic eye, like someone that speaks a Western language, you know, uh, French, German, English. The letters weren't arranged like how we would structure those sounds, like Safi, S-A-F-Y, like uh, Lifis, L-I-F-I-S. Uh, so you make some slight tweaks. I think the one that has upset the most people so far is Safi is Safia. Uh, which is an Arabic name that means pure, and I chose Sophia over... Uh, I know 
I think Project Naga's solution was to just elongate it and make it um, S A P P H I E and, and like elongate it and try to represent Safi the same sound but with more letters to make it not look so odd to an English speaker. I just decided to retain as many of the same letters and sounds as possible and go with a different name. Um, and I think Sophia retains mostly the same sound and is also relevant to the character that I see it as an acceptable liberty. Uh, let's see. Uh, we all know her oh, kind of name is actually Staffy, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know which name upsets me the most. Prof. Prof sucks. I hate it. Who is that? Sloof. Oh. Formerly known as Sloof, uh, he is Shroff now in our patch. Yeah. I believe it's oh, yeah, S C H R O F F. Yeah, because Shroff is a real German name, mm -hmm. but I don't like it. Well, the reason is this is uh, Sloof, we, we found out, uh, is actually the Ellis Island corruption of the name Shroff. Like, it's, you know, it's what. The, the clerks at Ellis Island would, would incorrectly write the name down as when immigrants came. So, and Sleuth just looks, it, it looks very odd in English. It's not how you would, it's like S-L-U uh, E-F or something like that. It looks like a CAPTCHA password and not a name. It, it it's structured very oddly, so I just decided to harken back to the original German rather than try and work around the name that kind of just looks like you let your cat run wild on the keyboard. <laughs> and this game, this script really does love its German. Oh yes, oh my goodness, yes. We have several German speakers in the server, uh, which we're very fortunate to have, so if I need to translate a new term for an army or uh, a title or something like that, I can run that by them and they'll tell me how to phrase that. Yeah, like the Swartz and Rosen or something? That that Black Nature army or something that they refer to yes. occasionally? Uh, the Schwartz Rosen, who are like the, the secret police of the uh, Lopterian Order. We went with uh, Schwartz Rosen because it's supposed to be Black Roses in German. So it's literally just uh, Schwartz Rosen, all one word. That makes sense. I guess. I mean, I, I never thought that any of the German ish names looked completely natural to me, but then again, as I said before you in chat, I don't think it, it's hard to make everything look natural, especially when you're going to change things from the way things were. So, um, mm -hmm. like I said, Things are going to be different, like names, like everything else, and it just takes a bit of getting used to, I think. Like, I, I'm just doing the same thing I did for Project Naga, which is like, appreciate that I, and like, remember that I'm used to the old thing and the way things were, and just accept that, like, yeah, things are going to be different, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's worse. Uh, the old wasn't necessarily good, especially in the case of the V5. Uh, the old patch was not the highest quality ever, so I'm used to it, but it doesn't mean it's correct, so I can just accept it as a redo rather than a change to the old. That is a very big difference. And I think unless you consciously go through that process, it is it can be a little hard to appreciate things like name changes to characters you know and love, or even personality changes. Because I think, for example, you mentioned that Lithis might have a very different personality than what the Shia patch gives him, sort of. Or it's like more complex than you would think. Uh... I think it was it was Bucks I said that about that I, I took a few liberties with. I Generally, I tried... Uh, I've never had any character like take a different action in the script than they actually do. I know the, the Tear Ring Saga patch does a little of that. Um, I might be a little... Uh, t you know, take certain liberties with a character's personality and how they talk. We'll be seeing a lot of that coming up with Kempf in Chapter 11. Luckily, a lot of people uh, seem to really like it, so it looked like that one works. But Mecca, you'll be the judge of that in just a few moments here when we get to that. Yeah. Um, so basically, my rule is the story remains the same. Characters take the same actions. The plot beats are still the same. It is still telling the same series of events. Um, but characters might speak a little bit differently. Their personalities might be tweaked this way or that way to help communicate something better. But by and large, it's going to be the same story as best I can tell it in the English language. Sorry, tricky turn coming off here. Come on, Dalshin. Be nice to me. Okay, good. 
so... Are you gonna try and recruit him? Yeah, why not? Might as well show off the whole strategy, right? Cause uh, yeah. People wanna no, recruit actually, everyone. Actually, oh yeah, Dawson, Dawson has something interesting. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I actually went the other day, but I didn't know... Lifus can recruit Dawson. Yeah, he can. I, I have like, no idea about that. I like, to, I like to use Leaf instead anyway, but sure. Yeah, same. Uh, who's gonna do Dalshin? Uh, I, I believe I they have the same dialogue, and Dalson has kind of like just like a yeah. little monologue, regardless of who the speaker is. Oh, right, is. right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he he is also the Shia patch in the SF script missed a nuance here with Dalson, um, which is basically. Uh, he only agreed to help the Empire because they told him his family would be spared of the child hunts. And in the other patch, he's like, Oh, they tried to take my brother in the child hunts? Well, I was fine with them before, <laughs> but... See, and that's an important distinction, because it's like... Yeah. I, I didn't care about it until it affected me, versus I was forced into doing it to save my family. Okay, this wow, is a that's little cool. thing, but uh, I try and preserve dialects for villagers across chapters. So I try and make a rule like, okay, we're in the region of Ith here, we're in the region outside Manster, we're outside Kelvet's Gate, and I try to make sure the villagers talk similarly to one another, have similar accents, and then when we go to a new region, I give them new ones to spice it up, but I try and keep it the same. That came back to bite me here because I was like, okay, Dawson's going to talk the same as. Uh, his sister and Yubel in chapter 3. Let me go back and look at how I did those so that I don't miss that up here. I'm gonna give Leaf a scroll so he doesn't get crit and just make him not kill anything with the slim sword. That might sound a little excessive, but um, to quote The Wire, which is another great inspiration of mine, God still resides in the details. <laughs> Damn, you got him, Leaf. Good job. Yeah, so after this we should be doing chapter 11. We've already been going for, I think it's like 50 minutes, so I don't know if we can do the whole chapter. Are there particular particular things that you want to show off, or is it very important that we see the whole thing? What do you think? Uh, I think it's, we don't have to see the whole thing. Like, the main mm -hmm. the main part of going to chapter 11 is just to watch Kempf be Kempf. Yes, and I... Yeah quite a bit to say about him, but once we've seen his opening monologue, and I think maybe some of the other dialogue, maybe when you trigger the trap, just to show off that it's no longer in America, maybe, <laughs> if we have time, but mostly that opening dialogue. Alright, opening dialogue, and I do like the idea of showing off the lack of in America. Yes. Oh, and we uh, we get to see the escape quotes here. Yeah, I saw ladies first on Karen. I remember they are like very similar in the old patch. Almost everyone is like, okay, I'll escape first. Sorry. Some, some variation of that. Yeah, in the text they are kind of similar. I tried to spice them up a little bit, um, but this is generally more accurate, I've found, even though all of them boil down to the same thing. I'm going ahead, bye now. Yeah. I mean, it works, because it's like what you said before, like it's just trying to show off personality without intruding with the story and the events. These are the kind of things you're, I feel like you should be more free to tinker with. Because yeah. it's not of a great consequence if you get it a little differently than what it was originally intended. Yeah, we, we get a little glimmer of personality. Brighton is a kind of a shame to run ahead. Uh, Fergus is like, oh, you know, my, my younger days are behind me when I'm the one that's the first out. Uh, so we get these little glimmers of, of personality and life to them that just add a little bit more so that you're characterizing things even while the characters are running. Oh boy! It's this scene! E. Oh, this scene was so much fun! <laughs> it was so long, it took me forever, but it was so much fun! There's like I four Saturday scene. cartoon villains in here. <laughs> hmm. I, I want to talk about something here really quick. Okay. Um, it was my decision for the child hunts that people participating in the child hunts, the Empire, they should uh, dehumanize the children, just like people participating in like real life genocides they do. They dehumanize the targets, so they refer to what they're doing as like harvesting. They refer to the children as cattle, as chattel, as property. They don't. Ta they they refer to them as children in passing, but they're talking about them like property, and they're using terms that are like agricultural. Like we had a good harvest this year. Yeah, I saw the harvest earlier. Yeah. That's right. And uh, Julius and Ishtar, their their exchange here 
uh, I took a certain liberty with Julius. He refers to Ishtar with um, open affection, which I did to help emphasize Ishtar's powerlessness in the scene. And you can read it uh, in a tragic way, which is Julius is showing genuine affection to her, but he's so far gone now that she he's no longer anywhere near the man that she fell in love with. Or he's lying, he's putting on a facade, he's not really affectionate towards her, he's just using all of these affectionate terms to remind her how powerless she is. She has a monologue here where she calls out Veld and Manfroy for being Saturday morning cartoon villains, and here comes Julius. Do we want to read Julius's excuse here? It's, it can be fun. Yeah, uh, sure, I'll, I'll give it a read. Sure. I merely wanted to be wanted them to be trained and educated, sculpted into adults worthy to inhabit the Empire. The ones who survive our rigorous training will become a new kind of ruling class, one that will govern govern over all others of common birth. Consider it, these children of peasants are given a chance to earn nobility, even happiness for themselves. At what cost? They compete against each other, learn to hate each other, struggle to survive without their families. You dare call that happiness? Oh, look, yes. flower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Ah, my dear, you'll understand my wisdom. Your betrothed's wisdom. One day, I'm sure. Say, there's a beautiful bed of flowers just out back. Let's take in the view together. Oh, I like this better because now it's multiple flowers, so it's much more realistic. I like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, did it say a singular flower? Did it? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, man. Singular flower. Alright, so that was chapter 4. Um, I'm gonna take a quick break and I will be back for chapter 11 because I need to find my safe state. We'll be, back. We'll be oh, right back. Something I just realized uh -huh. that by doing it as imprisoned, it's like, is that referring to Leaf or Ishtar? Mm. Mm. There we go. Jewel that, meanings. That's, uh, that's the English major in me. And I'm ashamed, and this is who you've got, and I'm sorry. Oh, wow, so you work at Starbucks. <laughs> oh, if only that, if only I had something that prestigious. <laughs> <laughs>